Another historic day for Hong Kong at the Paris Olympics as fencer Chung Ka Long defended his title to win his second gold medal. He's now the first and only athlete in the city to have achieved that feat. And on the same day, Siobhan Ho Hee became the first Hong Konger to bag three Olympic medals after swimming her way to bronze in the 200 meter freestyle. To recap the highlights, we turn to Post reporter Paul McNamara, who joins us from Paris. Hi, Paul. Another fantastic performance for Hong Kong. Tell us about it. Absolutely phenomenal. The best day Hong Kong have ever had in an Olympics ga an Olympic Games. You said it there. These are things that have never happened before. These are two athletes doing things for Hong Kong that nobody from the city has ever done. And we spoke before I came away about Chung Kar Long and the pressure of being defending champion and the fact he had this target on his back and these high class competitors wanted to beat him. And my word, they pushed him close, but he was absolutely fantastic. Twice in both the quarter final and the final, he was one point from defeat, but never say die attitude. So much quality, and he won both matches, obviously. His quarter final, especially against Enzo Lafort, the Frenchman, he did, he's replicated what Vivian Kong did. Vivian obviously came back against a French woman and broke the home fans' hearts. Chung's done exactly the same against a guy who is a two times world champion. So he's fighting real top, top caliber people as you'd expect in an Olympics. He came through that quarter final, kept his nerve and has gone on, as you have said, to become a two times Olympic champion, something that no Hong Konger has ever done. He's now responsible for two of the city's three gold medals. My colleague Mike Chan was at the Grand Palais for that and has written extensively about it and spoken about the wonderful atmosphere and the number of Hong Kongers in the stadium and the celebratory feel of, around Chung getting that gold medal. Myself, I was over at La Defence Arena for Siobhan Horhey's 200 metres freestyle final and what a gutsy swim she delivered. She was leading for 150 metres, holding off the two best 200 metre freestyle racers in history. She was unable to see that through and claim the gold medal, but she did enough for bronze, swam a very, very good time. And as you've said, that's the third Olympic medal for Siobhan and no time at all for her to rest. She goes in the 100 meter freestyle heats very soon this morning. Um, to go back to Chang Ka Long's win, he's the first one to, to win this title at the Olympics in how many years? Tell us about it. He's the first man for 68 years to defend a foil title and that shows you the extent of what he's done here. And again, we've alluded to it, you're competing with the best of the 31 people from the round of 32 where he joined the second round in the world. To go and do that once and come out on top in one day of competition is a sensational achievement. To do it twice, you've touched on it there, it's almost unprecedented. And we've spoken about this with fencing. It's such an on the day sport. There is no margin for error whatsoever. He has to turn up at the Grand Palais. He has to win five matches. If he errs in one of those matches, that is his Olympic Games over. That is three years of preparation, everything he's worked for down the drain in a few minutes on the piste. But he goes out five times in a row, whatever challenges he faces, Chung Ka Long seems to be able to find a way to overcome them. And that's why he's become a two times Olympic champion and put Hong Kong's name on the global map. That's correct. And, and for Siobhan, uh, she faced some pretty tough competition. How hard was it for her to pull off this medal? In terms of getting on the podium, prior to her race, her coach told us that Siobhan could swim her personal best and it might still not be enough for a place on the podium. That's how tough this competition is. The two girls she didn't manage to beat, Molly O'Callaghan and Ariana Titmus, and again, we've touched on this before, they are absolutely phenomenal. At the Australian Olympic trials last month, they both swam under the previous world record. Now, times in this pool are actually not as fast as you would normally expect at an Olympics. The pool is 2.15 metres deep. A normal competition standard pool is three metres deep. And the reason for this is because the diving events are not happening in the same swimming pool. So the organisers have thought they didn't need to have the same depth of pool. The problem is when the pool isn't quite so deep, it creates more current and then the water fights against the swimmer. 
What you will still get though is the best swimmer coming out on top just in a fractionally slower time. And that's what happened with Molly O'Callaghan and Ariana Titmus. They are two, at the moment, unbeatable Australian athletes. Siobhan is the best of the rest and essentially the best swimmer in the world who is not Australian. She saw off every other challenge. There was a Canadian swimmer who was fourth. He used to be coached by the same coach as Siobhan, so he had some inside knowledge. Siobhan was well in front of her. And as I said, she just looked so, so good for 150 metres. She was front running. She really wanted to put her foot down and throw the challenge down to those Aussies. Wasn't able to hold on. But in what's not her preferred event out of the two she's competing in here, she's done exceptionally well and set herself up beautifully for the 100 metres freestyle. And we hope in two days' time, we're going to be standing here saying Siobhan Horhe is the first Hong Konger with four Olympic medals. So what are her chances of adding to her three medals? Good. Um, again, going back to the conversations with her coach before these games, when he said a personal best swim might not be enough for the podium in the 200, he said if she swims her best in the 100, that will get her on the podium and it might well be enough for her to win the event. She's her fiercest competition comes from Sarah Schostrom, a Swedish girl who is a world record holder. So it's going to be, again, big competition for her. Her racing today is all about just getting through and conserving energy. So she has a heat this morning and speaking in the mix zone last night after her medal, she said her only objective now was to get as much sleep as possible to come back, use as little energy as possible to get through her heat. She'll hopefully have some more rest before her semi-final tonight. She'll need to turn it up a little bit and then she's got 24 hours to prepare for a final. And she was a silver medalist in that event in Tokyo three years ago. And I'd say she has a, there's definitely a chance of her going one better and winning Hong Kong's third gold medal of these games. So Paul, any other athletes to watch out for today? Yeah, there certainly are the mixed doubles table tennis duo of Du Hoi Kem and Wong Chung Ting are going for bronze. They have their third place match at half past one against a Korean pair. Du and Wong were so unlucky to lose their semi-final yesterday. It was a real roller coaster, but they lost it 4-3 to the North Koreans. But they have a chance to get Hong Kong's fourth medal of the games today when they face the South Koreans. The final of that event is interesting because it's Wang Chu Kin and Sun Yin Cha who are going for gold for China. And we spoke before about China wanting eight out of eight table tennis golds. So this will keep them on course for that. And we have Chu Hun Chin rowing this morning in the men's single skulls quarterfinals. He's already made history by coming this far as a Hong Konger. And he's going to see now if he can get to a semi-final and go way, way beyond what any rower from this city has ever done before. All right, we'll all be keeping our fingers crossed here. Thanks, Paul. You could get the latest developments from our post correspondence in Paris by checking out scmp.com.